So I just wanted to talk about some basics tonight, to go back to basics again. And I pulled out, uh, I thought I'd look at uh, Ken, Ken Jones's uh, lawsuit with reality. It's good, so it's good to remind ourselves every now and again of our lawsuit with reality. Um, but I wanted to ask you, when you, when, what, what do you think, of the, when people start practice of meditation, whatever we want to call it, what do you think, what are the general reasons you think that people would first come to practice? Confusion. Pardon? Confusion. Confusion, yeah. Mm -hmm. Their lawsuit with reality. Their lawsuit with reality, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> Curiosity. Curiosity, okay. Curiosity, their lawsuit with reality, confusion. Having some vague conception that their lives are going to be improved by people. Okay, yeah, and some <laughs> vague. <laughs> so, could even be a big hope. Mm -hmm. <laughs> vague as well, though, yeah. Feeling a dissatisfaction. Dissatisfaction, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what David Lloyd calls a uh, sense of lack. Mm, yeah, so mm. desire, I guess, no? Even if it's to stop desire, there is something about desire. Yeah, desire, sure, yeah, yeah. Mm. Underline it all, yeah. Mm. All things you're buying, yeah. I'm also reminded of what Ken said that you, the people who are just neurotic enough to ask the question, what's all this about? Yeah. And who am I? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, I mean, oh, am I being, has that been recorded? Okay, because I, I noticed it anyway, so I have to be careful. <laughs> Just forget so, about it. So, so the, the first, I mean, my own, I think my own first question when I started was, you know, what, what is the meaning of all this? That was the kind of, you know, what's, what, what, what is it all about? Why, why, why would we all go through all this? What's the point, you know? And then, um, and then well, other folk come less, less self-involved and, and thinking, you know, why is the world in such a mess? Why is, there, you know, why is there so much suffering? Why is it in the way it is? You know, that's another question people ask. And then, maybe alongside both of those, but also separately, folk have this um, idea that maybe they've, they've heard about or read about or uh, about becoming enlightened. Some, this idea that they would be, they'll become enlightened and once they become enlightened, everything will be on easy street from then on. Yeah. So there's those, those kind of questions. But, um, the primary intention is none of those questions. I mean, and none of those questions can necessarily be answered in, 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 or, or articulated in a verbal way. And Dogen, in his most, I'm, I'm, I'm being very basic now, you're already familiar, most of you anyway, are very familiar with Do, Dogen said very clearly, to study Buddhism is to study the self. To study Buddhism is to study the self. So numero uno is study the self. To study the self is to forget the self. And to forget the self is to be enlightened by all things. So, um, our first task, our first job really, is to have some clarity about ourselves. And um, one of the, I think, confusions that arises now, why, um, independently of the questions that you came for, like confusion or, what was it, what did you say? Curiosity. Curiosity. People will come to a practice like this because they think that it will help them calm their minds. And uh, that's, a, that's a big thing, you know, calming your mind. It's almost like a fashion thing now. Uh, meditation. I'm more calm than you. <laughs> My meditation is better than yours. Uh, but it absolutely, I mean, calming the mind is fine and it's useful, um, but really it's about transforming the mind. That's what the practice is only about, is transformation. It's not about calming the mind. 
the mind, we do need to meditate, we do need to calm the mind, because unless we calm the mind, we can't see what's going on. So, but calmness may come out of the practice, but calmness isn't the intention of the practice. Um, so, how do we... How do we, how, how do we understand our own workings? And that's really crucial and, and, and you know, and each of us is radically different both in terms of our upbringing, our genetics, our personal proclivities, you know, the whole, well, each of us is different. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm often really surprised that any of us can speak to one another and have a conversation because, you know, what, from my own conditioning, my background, my understanding, what I say carries all that with it. And what you hear carries all your stuff with it. And it isn't necessarily the same, so you may not even hear what I'm saying in the way that I intend you to hear it. And you may respond to me and I may feel that you've completely missed me or I may feel challenged by you and you're being rude and you know, and the, whole, and the whole thing. Or you may be so disinterested that even though you don't understand the word or you haven't understood what I'm saying, you'll just let it pass. You know, that happens as well. We, we're all tolerant, we let things pass. We won't kind of examine what's going on. So there's all kinds of different ways that this confusion can arise because of the way we are. So unless we're, to some degree, have some understanding, some clarity of, the bot of our bottom line emotions or uh, aversions or desires, then it's really hard to be clear with someone else. So, you know, Dogen was really clear, to study Buddhism is to study the self, and then to study the self is to forget the self. And I don't think that you can forget the self unless you really know it. Because otherwise it's going to keep nagging, you know. You don't let it go unless you really, really familiar and know it. Yeah. So, I'll just read you something that Ken, Ken defines our lawsuit with the reality as such. Uh, where's it really go? What did he say? Oh, is it? Sitting in meditation, we may vividly experience the constant agitation of our self, anxiously proclaiming, yes, I am here, alive and kicking. From what black hole is it struggling to escape? There is evident here a sense of existential insecurity, a deep-seated unease, an inner emptiness, a sense of lack. So, that may not be immediately obvious to you, this kind of black hole that we're all avoiding, but when you've been sitting for quite a long time, what comes up for a lot of folk is a fear of going down a black hole. And this fear arises out of the loss of, the, the sense that you did, that who you think you are, the, the sense of self may disappear. And that creates tremendous angst and worry. And you know, I know it well, I'm very familiar with it, I know it well. Uh, so, yeah. So, Anyway, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, but anyway, that sense of existential lack or emptiness certainly comes up for some folk. Why it does, I'm not sure. It comes up more strongly for some than others, but certainly comes up. And then uh, Ken goes on to say that the Buddha traced this angst, this angst, to the three signs of being. The three signs of being are insubstantiality, impermanence and dukkha or dukkhas however you want to say a lack of ease suffering <clears throat> so dukkha is the suffering arising from the ultimately unavailing struggle to consolidate and experience a sense of self so sufficiently strong and enduring that it can deny the insubstantiality and impermanence of all phenomena, including us. This has been characterized as a lifelong and unwinnable lawsuit with reality. So, does, that, does everybody get that one? Could you say it again? 
Yeah, I'll read it again. The Buddha traced this angst to the three signs of being, <coughs> insubstantiality or no self, impermanence and dukkha that arises from the other two. The last is the suffering arising from the ultimate, unavailing struggle to consolidate and experience a sense of self so strong and enduring to deny the insubstantiality and impermanence of all phenomena, including ourselves. This is being characterized as our lifelong and unwinnable lawsuit with reality. So, I mean, it, just to make it really personal, you only have to look at all the things you do to ensure your security, your safety, uh, all those things, all the time, not just, not just in terms of your, of your pension or where you live or your kids, or, but in, in, in just ordinary everyday interactions where you want your sense of self to be fed back to you by the person you, you're speaking with or have relationship with. And any challenge to that sense of self, we all know from any interaction, particularly in work or in you know, business where we don't, we're not that necessarily friendly with folk, that it causes upset and struggle and hurt and all those things. <coughs> Does that, does that resonate for folk or am I shouting, yeah? <laughs> and we're all subject to it. Some of us less than others, as, uh, as Ken rightly points out in his book, uh, Beyond Mindfulness. You know, some of us are born at one end of the spectrum where, you know, we can lead a relatively happy okay life where this doesn't happen and the other end of the spectrum that we're born where we're born with a basic insecurity or we're given insecurity um, by our upbringing or our folks and, and unless we're really aware of this background or this the substance to how we become how we are then we're subject to it all the time so, for example, if, 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 if you've not had a secure childhood and you've been treated badly and you find you don't trust folk, you know, you, people are not can't be depended on, you can't trust the world. What do you do? If you're not careful, you turn in on yourself and you close down and you shut the world out. That, you know, that, that's, that's an example. Other examples are you, your insecurity may cause you to be you know, too, too much of an extrovert, you need too much attention, you want to be seen and noticed and recognised. By... So all the things that have, 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 that have been the basis of how we've arrived at this place we are now, feed into every part of our life. You know, there isn't any. There isn't. There isn't a you that's in here, and a you that's walking about town, and a you that's in work. I mean, you, that you that you are, is always on show. You may not think so, and I don't think so, but it is. It's on show. You may not know, but you know everyone around you knows. So. The intention of the practice finally, is to experience the spaciousness and the interconnectedness of what, 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 you know, what you always lose for words now, but this, this kind of, let, let's say the ground of our being, or the great life, or the universal life, or however we want to call it, what manifests to a greater or to a smaller or greater degree, when the self drops away to a smaller or greater degree, is the, is, is the measure of the spaciousness and, 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 and uh, sense of ease you can have with yourself. So you, 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 and we can't really start to aspire to be in that place until we've we have an awareness about our own process. Otherwise, we're going to get, we get, 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 keep getting caught up in ourselves, you know, because ourselves keeps wanting attention. And... 
So, <clears throat> yeah. So, my suggestion, and it's not easy, uh, is to sometimes have some time, give yourself some time to have some recollection about the threads that go through your life, that keep reoccurring, when situations keep coming up and you, you know, you recognise them, you go, oh God, I've done that again, <laughs> I've done that again. What, is, what are these threads? Where does this come from? What is the source of it? Because uh, only you will know. And if you approach it from a perspective of, if you can get some distance from your sense of self, so that you're kind of more, see, you're seeing yourself as an observer, so that you're, you're doing back, in this particular instance, have some separation. It can be less traumatic, it can be less difficult, it can be, you, as, as, uh, as you said, you can, you can bring the curiosity you might bring to practice into a curiosity about yourself. Which is a, a lighter way to do it, you know, a more fun way to do it without it, you having to beat yourself up all the time. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we, 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 we hear a lot about self sufficiency, and I think, you know, I think so. Well, I only hear. We don't hear about it a lot, but I'm conscious of it because I watched the program last night. What was that program? And the people who moved to Morocco to be self-sufficient. Oh, that Fogel. Oh yeah, Ben Fogel going to see folk who was we want to be self-sufficient. I don't mean in that way, but I mean self-sufficient in the sense that you feel that from from out of your own resources, if you if you kind of you know just like in the in the West when they used to get all the wagons around, you know, to keep the Indians out. You, you get all your wagons around yourself, you're going to be okay. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You can't be self-sufficient in that way. And that's why, you know, the, the practice is about moving toward being more spacious and interconnected. Because pragmatically what seems to happen is when that happens, our sense of ease, our sense of ourselves starts to relax and we can feel more at ease with ourselves. I don't know what happens with the wagons and the Indians. So they, they usually throw flames in, don't they? <laughs> the wagons all burn. <laughs> I remember an American teacher saying, uh, when you circle the wagon, first rule, be careful not to end up shooting at yourselves. Oh yeah, across the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so the, the difference between, I guess, you know, a meditation class and, and the Zen tradition is, the Zen tradition is about transformation. It's all it's about. It's not about finding a couple of hours to sit and be quiet and charge the batteries up, which is fine as well, you know, I'm not, anybody who wants to do that is very welcome, but it's not the bottom line issue that we're working with. Hope you don't feel told off. <laughs> Didn't mean to, I just kind of... <laughs> Don't take it. Can I just say something about um, beginners? You know, what, what folks often say when they first come into practice, and, and I think it's true for lots of people, myself included, is that, uh, you know, the attraction of the teaching, the relief of suffering, mm. is, is apart from any psychological curiosity or, you know, existential angst or what have you, a common theme, I guess, for folks is, is to a greater or lesser degree, we've all had an experience of suffering. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and the, the, there is an attraction to uh, a practice which seems to offer relief of, even, yeah. even if it's not enlightenment and transformation, <clears throat> or so, you know, the, the big hits. Uh, the relief of suffering is, seems an important pull within it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. When you mention beginning, I'm thinking the interesting thing about when we all start practice, certainly for me, and I don't know everybody else, 
was the same. But I mean, I, I just had so many questions I wanted to ask all the time. And then in the midst of the practice, I thought I knew everything. I stopped asking questions, and you know, and then I kind of got dry and in the desert. And that's why we keep talking about beginner's mind, because beginner's mind is an open. Sp- you know, when we start practice, we're we're, we're curious, we're open, we're spacious. We want to ask questions, and, and we we should, if we can, sustain that way of, of experiencing the world to keep asking questions, you know, of ourselves and of other people, and uh, and. and because when we ask a question, what we're saying, what we're, we're actually making ourselves, we're, you know, we're, we're a bit like a cat when it turns on its back and shows you its stomach. It's saying, you know, I'm vulnerable. I, I don't know everything, but I also trust you. So it's nice to, uh, ask, to, to feel able to ask folk about stuff. Um, I think also sensei. I think I speak from my own experience, you know, as you're saying, we come because we want to have a sense of calm and have a spiritual life. And I suppose if I'm being honest, that was my intentions at first, but I soon realised that was bullshit. I was bullshitting myself. I was suffering and then and something was telling me to move to this and to actually look at those things mm. and, and yeah. work on them, you know, to do yeah. something about it. Yeah. Thanks, Keith. Thanks. At the same time, of course, it may not work for you. That's the other thing. You know, it isn't guaranteed. It may not work for you. I mean, and, and if you, I'd, I'd, I'd be ruthless with yourself if it's not working. You know, you need to find something that does. <laughs> you may find some other vehicle, or you know, it's. Uh, uh, so you know, be really pragmatic about any practice you take up, spiritual practice. I mean, be pragmatic about it if it's working. But you've also got to give it time, of course, because it's it's a slow, it's a slow, it's a slow burn. You can't, however, however old you are, once you're over twenty, you know you've got twenty years of habitual patterns already ingrained, and ever every year after that, it'll get even deeper. So you know you've got to give. You're not going to change overnight. <laughs> it takes a while. So for those of you that started young. Well done. <laughs> be less, less of a, less of a, less of a groove has already been cut. And for those of us who started old, have you started old? You, 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 John, you no chance. <laughs> <right? laughs> you and I are going to hell in a handcart. Don't <laughs> <laughs> I give you a wave. <laughs> Okay. I'm very happy if anybody has anything they'd like to share or say. Or I'm sorry, I, I just wanted to say something else because um, you know, you know, Dogen's often repeated uh, phrasing to study Buddhism is to study the self. Yeah. But it is curious, isn't it, that, that in that first appreciation of what the self is that I'm studying, those three uh, dharma signals, the part of it is realising it is suffering. A a condition of this self, which I'm seeking to study, is to recognise that suffering is a common human condition. Whether it's dissatisfaction or whether it is, you know, on this scale of a level or something like that, there there is a common theme, a common story, which the Buddha recognised. And, and it's it's that, but but I'm curious about because you often talk about the, the you know the black hole, yeah, the, the uh, which I equate to sort of uh, the realization of emptiness that yeah. ultimately it is it all can fall away from you. Yeah, it's a good way to say it. Yeah, yeah. Is it is that? Yeah, yeah. That it is it is sub- insubstantial. Yeah. Completely. <laughs> yeah, it can disappear. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.